View Router is an official view tool that allows developers to easily create a single page application. It takes the route, or the page you're trying to navigate to, and maps them to different view components. One of my favorite features of View Router is the ability to create smooth transitions and animations between your pages. These View Router transitions are a great way to add some polish to your web apps. In this video, we'll set up View Router in View 3 and look at a few different ways to add page transitions. Let's jump right in. For this tutorial, we're going to be creating our Vue 3 project using Vite. And if you want to learn more about Vite, there's a link in the description for our in-depth guide. But here, we're going to create our app and run npm install to get our dependencies. Next, we want to add Vue Router to our project like this. Now that Vue Router is installed, let's set it up. Inside our source folder, we'll create a new folder called Router, and inside, we'll make an index.js file. And this is where we're actually going to set up and export our router. View router gives us two methods that we need to import to get started. First is create router, and second is create web history. Create router will, as you can guess, create our router instance. Create web history creates an HTML5 history. Often, single page apps like Vue will use the hash history, in which all URLs are prefixed with a hash. But this is bad for SEO, and I recommend using the create web history to provide clean and SEO ready URLs. And then the final thing we import is our Hello World component. We're going to be changing this later on to use our custom pages, but for now we can use the built-in Hello World to just set up View Router. With everything imported, we create a constant router and set it equal to create router. And inside create router, we'll pass it an object. And this object needs two properties. First will be a history mode, and like we were just talking about, we're using create web history. And second will be an array of all of the routes that we want in our app. For each route, we declare an object with at least two properties, one with the path to our page, and one for the component we want to render. Our app is going to have two routes, home and guide. For now, we're just going to set up both of their components to hello world, but once again, we'll switch that up in a little bit. The last thing we want inside index.js is to export our router object. Next, we actually have to configure our main.js and tell our view app to use our router. So inside here, let's import router from router, and then we want to separate this command into multiple lines. First, we'll create our app and assign it to a constant called app. Next, we're going to tell app to use our router. And then finally, we can mount it. All right, we're almost there. So finally, we want to go inside app.view and actually start rendering stuff. We can do this by using a router view component. So depending on our path, view router will give us a different component and then render that component in place of this element. So in our app, if we take a look at the URL right now, we are at the base path and our router is working properly. And if we navigate to slash guide, we can still see our hello world component. But let's say we want to go to a path that doesn't exist. Maybe it's an about page. As you can see, no component renders because our router doesn't know how to handle this path. We have to declare our valid paths when we set up view router. All right, this is great, but let's actually make our home and guide pages now. So inside our components folder, we're going to create two view components. The first will be called home, and the second will be called guide. Let's open up home.view and create a base template. I'm just going to create a wrapper div with a class name of page, and then add some placeholder headings and paragraphs. And then let's do the same thing with our guide component. To get these components working inside of ViewRouter, let's go back into router slash index.js and import both home and guide. Then let's make the base URL, or just the slash route to our home component and our slash guide path route to our guide component. Now, if we go back to localhost 3000, our home page will render. And then when we type in slash guide, we'll see our guide component. Our basic view routing works, but we're gonna add a few styles and a header section to make our app look a lot cleaner. Inside app.view, we wanna create our entire component inside of a div with a class name of content. And then we'll add some styles to make this class a center column. Next, we wanna create some navigation links. We can do this by using view routers router link component. And these components render out to just regular anchor tags, and they allow us to easily create links using our defined paths. So we'll create two router links, one for home and one for guide. For each of these, we need to set the to prop, and this will set the path that our router link is linking to. So for our home link, it's slash, and then for guide, it's slash guide. Exactly what we set up inside of our router file. And now let's add some styles to these anchor tags. So first we'll change the base state, and then we're gonna to wanna to add some styles. So when our link is hovered, we can just say a colon hover, and then pass it in a border bottom. 
One handy thing about View Router and Router Links is that they dynamically add styles depending on your application state. Here we can use one called Router Link Active. It adds a class if your router link is pointing to the current page. And let's just add this class to be styled like our hover state. And now in our app, that blue border will be visible whenever we're on that particular page. So in our home page, home is underlined. And if we click on guide, guide will be styled. Now that we have the basics of view router set up, let's take a look at how to add some transitions. To get a really simple example working, we're just going to implement a simple fade transition between our two different routes. In older versions of view and view router, all we had to do was wrap our router view with a transitioning element. However, the new versions of ViewRouter make us do it a little bit differently. So inside of app.view, what we want to do is change router view from a self-closing tag and give it a vslot attribute. And inside, we're going to create an object to get the component. Thanks to this vslot, we can now access this component inside of our router view. And we're going to use this by creating a dynamic component and binding the is attribute to our component. So now our view router will tell this dynamic component what to render. Finally, to actually create our transition, we can just wrap this dynamic component with a transition element. And since we're making a fade transition, we're going to give it a name of fade. So now is a great time to understand how exactly this transition element works. The transition element sets up different hooks and adds classes to your changing elements so that we can style them through our different stages of the transition. There are six different transition classes three for entering, and three for leaving. V enter from and V leave from set the start state of the transition. And these classes are removed once our transition starts. V enter to and V leave to set the end state of the transition. Finally, V enter active and V leave active control our transition while it's active. These six class names are the default names for our transition element, meaning if we don't name our transition, it will apply these classes. However, since we did give it a name of fade, these six classes are renamed like this, just replacing the V with the name. So to create our fade effect, we want to modify the opacity of our elements. We want the elements to come in from an opacity of zero and then fade out to an opacity of zero. We can do this by giving fade enter from and fade leave to an opacity of zero. Then when our transition is active, so in our fade enter active and fade leave active classes, we want to transition our opacity. The reason that we never have to explicitly state when we want our opacity to be 1 is because that's the default opacity value for an element. So at the beginning, the fade enter from will set the opacity of our element to 0. Then once the transition starts, that class is removed, and the opacity will transition to the default value of 1. If we look at this, we can see that our element is fading out properly, but the element fading in comes in early, and then everything kind of jumps around. Basically, it just looks bad. And that's because by default, our transitions are happening simultaneously. If we inspect element, we can see that when we change routes, there are two page divs during our transition. We can fix this by setting the mode on our transition. And there are three different modes. One is the default mode that we have now, where the two elements are transitioning at the same time. Next is in out mode, where the new element fades in, and then when it's done, the old element will fade out. Finally, what we're going to be using is called out in mode. So first, the old element will fade out, and then the new element will fade in. We can set the mode of our transition simply by defining it on our element. So let's just type mode equals out in. Now when we run our app, it works properly. And when we inspect element, we'll see that only one page div is in the DOM at a time. Awesome. You've created a viewer router transition. Now let's look at how to implement some more complex transitions using animate.css. Animate.css is a great library that gives us different CSS animation classes, like bounces, fades, rotates, and a lot more. To add it to our project, let's head over to their website, the link will be in the description, and use the CDN link to import it into our project. So let's copy, and then paste it inside of index.html. Next, we're going to want to add the animate.css classes whenever our transition is entering or leaving. In our fade example, we used view router's generated class names to style our transition. However, to integrate animate.css, we need to use custom classes. So inside our transition element, we'll use the attribute interactive class, and we're going to set it to the animate animated class, which is needed for animate.css, and then we can specify our animation, and we'll use the animate fade in left transition. Let's do the same thing with leave active class, but we'll change our animation to fade out left. Back in our app, you can see that our animate.css styles work perfectly. 
The final thing we're going to look at in this video is adding different transitions depending on our route. Right now, we're using the same transition every single time, but with View Router, there's a really simple way to add dynamic transitions. So we're going to be treating our two pages kind of like a slideshow. So when we go from home to guide, we want it to slide to the right. And when we go from guide to home, we want it to slide to the left. To set up these per route transitions, we can set meta information on our routes. Inside router slash index.js, let's add a meta object and give it two properties, one called enter class and one called leave class. For our home route, we want the enter class to be fade in left and the leave class to be fade out right. For our guide route, we want the enter class to be fade in right in the leave class to be fade out left. Then back inside app.view, we want to add another property into our router view's v slot. So right after component, let's add route. And this will give our router view access to the current route. So now we want to bind our enter active class using the vbind, or just the colon, and then we'll bind it to our route.meta.enter class. And we'll do the same thing for our leave class. In our app, let's refresh and toggle between the routes. Depending on where we're navigating, it's a different transition. However, for the effect that I'm looking for, this transition feels a little slow and doesn't really give that true slideshow vibe. And that's because of this out in mode waiting until one component is completely gone until bringing the next one in. So let's remove this mode attribute and see what happens. The timing looks better, but we're back to that problem that we had before where the components are jumping all over the place. To fix this, we can set the page class which if you remember is the wrapper element for both home and guide to have an absolute position. So inside our app view, let's give page class a position of absolute and set the top to 30 pixels. Now, when we switch between the pages, it feels super responsive and like our two components are actually sliding together. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up here. I hope this helped you get view router and transitions inside of your app. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more view content. Peace.